The boys broke their door, again. This is the second time in 24 hours. And we're also trying to put up a little kidding stall in our garage. Good evening, everybody. It's Monday. And I'm down here for our fourth bottle feeding session of the night. I have to milk sugar. Hi, bunny. This bunny is getting awfully friendly. Hi, baby. Um, we're getting super close to creeper kitten. And I'm getting really nervous. We have to get an area set up for these two little babies before creeper has one little babies. I feel like she's gonna have three. She's big. What are you doing out there? What are you doing? I'm going to get these bottles into these babies while they're still warm. And then I think before I feed all of the girls, I'm going to do like a little introduction video for you guys because I've introduced and talked about our pregnant girls quite a bit, but I haven't really introduced any of the, the soon to be year to you guys. Babies? These guys are growing like babies. So they were born at seven pounds and eight pounds. And last time we weighed, which I think was this weekend, we had 10 pounds and 10 and a half pounds. Those are pretty big babies. There you go. These babies were disbudded and their heads are looking really nice. Yeah. All right, so I'll open these guys. It's going to be a little interesting because they're yeah. all ready to be fed. So they're all gonna try to run outside probably. Yeah. This is cinnamon. Yeah. Cinnamon is our biggest doe yeah. by far. Yeah. She is two years old now. Yeah. And she's a half sister to Sugar. Yeah. Sugar is yeah. same dad, different mom. Yeah. She was born a day after Cinnamon, and she is probably our smallest doe on the farm. She's the one that just had the two babies. Cinnamon is due at the end of the month. Then we have Creeper, who you probably all know. I'll try to do this inside because it's kind of windy. Um, Creeper is the very big girl. She was. She's f almost four now, <laughs> and she kitted last year to two beautiful does, which we kept. This is Moonspot, and this is Milky Way, her sister. And they are both sired. Their sire or their dad is Toast. <laughs> this is Lone Star. Um, Lone Star is almost a year old. She is a beautiful doe. Her sire has sired many many beautiful daughters and he sadly passed away uh right around christmas time so we almost didn't get her i was afraid that the person that we were buying her from was going to back out and keep her super happy to have her on the farm really great genetics behind her this is cookie cookie came to us a little feral uh she came from the same farm that she came from and she came from which is also where we got our buck toast She's getting better. She is by far my favorite doe when it comes to looks. She's very straight. She's very long. She has a beautiful face, not quite as nice as Cinnamon. Cinnamon, Cinnamon has just the most beautiful Roman nose ever. She will turn her face to the side so you can kind of see. <laughs> um, yeah, so see, she's got that really beautiful Roman nose that you want to see on a Nubian. And then we have our wildest girl who's honestly come a really long way. I'm very surprised. She's a great girl. Uh, this is golden hour. So she's all white. She was 100% bought because she's all white. Um, although she does have some really great milking genetics behind her. She's also polled, which means she is naturally hornless. So that means her kids could potentially come out without horns as well. And depending on what her udder looks like and her body looks like when she gets older, 
potentially if she gives us a pulled buck, we might want to keep it on the farm just to kind of um, bring some pulled genetics into the farm. So those are the girl goats. The boy goats, we've got Toast, um, who we've met a few times. We've got Jasper. I'd love to introduce you to them, but they've been locked in the barn again because they keep getting out. So they're in a mood and I'm not going to try to introduce them while they're in their mood. I'm going to get these girls fed. I'm going to milk out sugar. I'm going to feed the boys. Close everybody up. And I hope you enjoy. Getting a little bit crammed in here because we've got the kidding pen set up. And so everything's just kind of shoved over here with the cats and the hay and the grain. We do plan on hopefully creating some more space in the future. So any of this crusty stuff on her tail is just from her still cleaning out from giving birth. It's pretty normal for that to happen for a week or two after birth. The small amount is a healthy amount. While I'm milking, never milked a goat before, I'm taking the tea in my hand. I'm cutting off the circulation, I guess you could say, from the udder, the bag, from the teat. And then I'm slowly using these fingers to push that milk out of the teat. If you get really fancy, you can go two at a time. I'm never pulling down on the teats when I'm doing this. I am, I'm always pushing up, cutting off circulation and squeezing. <laughs> have your mouth. They do, they do. I don't know if you can see that. So this is after um, a, a four and a half hour fill. Um, we milked her around 1230 so we could fill bottles for the babies. So this is not as much as she'd be giving on a 12 hour fill. Obviously in the mornings after she's been all night without milking, we get a lot more, but she's doing great. She's producing enough to feed her babies and a little bit more sometimes. Um, for first freshener, I'm very proud of her for that.
I said I wasn't gonna introduce the boys to you, but they're being so good. So this is Toast. He's the dad to most of our babies. Watch out. This is Jasper. He is not daddy yet, but he's beautiful. He's gonna make great babies. <laughs> boys, stay in your barn. I feel like I haven't really showed you guys the kitties in a little bit. So, here they are. It's a little grainy, because it's dark, but Mavis and Curry, and they're both doing really good. And Mavis doesn't mind a little bit of touch here and there, kind of, <laughs> not really. Greg's gonna come out and do the last. Wow, that's a lot harder to close than I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> um, Greg's gonna come out and he's gonna do the last bottle feeding session for the little babies. And usually the ducks have been going in their coop at night by themselves. So when he comes out around 7, uh, 7.30, 8 o'clock to do that, they are in the coop. So he'll just close them in the coop. I'll usually be in bed with the girls, trying to get them to go to sleep. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy. Um, hopefully I'll have a video or a part of a video or I'll add on to this video, um, of us trying to set something up to put these little rascals in before this big lady has her babies, three of them, right Creeper? Mm -hmm. Two does and a buck. I've got a buck spoken for and I've got two does spoken for, so that's what I'm hoping for. Anyways, I hope that you guys have a wonderful night and I hope that you enjoyed. Good, Good evening, everybody. It's Tuesday evening. I already took care of the animals. I had Greg's help. <laughs> um, Cause we are having lobster over to my parents' house tonight. They've got a friend visiting from Alaska. So my parents have the girls. We both came over and took care of all the goats and we're also trying to put up a little kidding stall in our garage it's not fancy but we've been fighting wind for a few days we've got some pallets we're gonna try to set some pallets up here um, we'll probably board in the pallets so they can't get their legs stuck in them throw some shavings down put the heat lamp in here and yeah, and then hopefully this weekend we'll try to put up the little hoop house idea thing, but we just haven't been able to with all of the wind. So that's a little update on the kidding pen. And yeah, I hope you guys have a good night. Hello everybody, it's Wednesday. I tried to record this earlier, but my hair was absolutely wild. And I'll insert like a little picture or clip of it. There's no way anybody could have focused on what I was saying with the hair the way that it was. So I'm re-recording this part. We, well, not we, Greg, built a little kidding pen it's like an emergency kid pen in the garage. So we've got a couple uh, pallets 
and then he boarded them in so if the kids are jumping around they can't get their legs stuck in these little cracks this is just for if creeper ends up looking like she's gonna kid before we can get something built outside like the kind of like poop house idea that we want to build with the cattle panels we have something we can put them in ideally we didn't we don't want to put them in the garage just because it's pretty cold in the garage it doesn't really get a lot of sunlight i also attempted to clean out the duck barn uh, it's a weekday so greg's at work until five and i have both of the girls as i normally do so to complete anything is pretty much impossible but i did get some of that done so I will insert some clips of that. I might actually go down and try to finish up the rest of it because it's a really nice day out and the girls are doing pretty good right now. I hope you enjoy. I will see you this weekend, hopefully for a birth video. I don't know. <laughs> Creeper's getting pretty big. I'm hopping back on here because I just came down to work on the, the duck coop and the boys broke their door. Again, this is the second time in 24 hours that the boys have broken their barn. And I know why people go the AI route and just buy semen because these boys are destructive. You're so destructive, but you're so cute. Jasper's getting a little beard too. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if Toast will ever get a beard. Poor boy. He's still handsome. You're still a handsome boy. Don't hit her in the face with it, okay? Yeah. Run around her. Run around her in circles. I did it. It might not seem like a lot to some people, but I'm a stay at home mom of two small children and I can't get anything done unless my fiance Greg is here ever. So this is like huge accomplishment for me. Super excited about it. Yay. <laughs> so I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your week.